Nice to see you, Annalyn. We'll just give it a few more minutes. We had about um, almost 40 people joining us today and I have quite a few messaging me saying they'll want the recording. So we'll see how many will be here. I'll just give it two, three minutes and then I'll get going. So thank you for joining me for the 30 minutes. Just get settled and I'll let you know when we A4 away. No. Okay, we've got some more people in the waiting room. Just getting everyone in. What I'll do is I'll wait till about 12.05, the latest, and then we'll get started. And we'll be done by 12.30, everyone. So make sure that we're done in time. If any of you have any um, specific questions in the meanwhile around parenting world changes in a VUCA world, uh, you're welcome to just put them in the chat and hopefully I can also answer them as we go along. So please feel free to do that. Just two minutes and we'll get started, guys. And the one thing I want, I'm just going to do is um, make sure that you muted while I'm sharing. Um, so I'll, I'll meet you. Um, Amy just said, morning all, please excuse my camera being off. I'm listening while on the move. I'm totally comfortable with that. So also I know for some people it's much easier, um, you know, if the camera's off, so please feel free to do that. Right, guys, I think what I'm going to do is just get started. And then if anyone comes into the waiting room while I'm going for it, then we can, um, I'll let them in as we go along. So let me just get everyone sorted here. OK, 
Okay, so parenting all changes in a vocal world. Um, so welcome, thank you for joining me. I see one or two familiar faces, some new ones that I haven't chatted to before. I really welcome you. Um, I've had quite a lot of people message me and say, can they deserve the recording? I know how precious time is. And if you're eating lunch, please feel free to continue to eat lunch as you go along. I'm totally comfortable with that. So I think let's get started. Um, some of you know me well, but for those who don't know me, I just want to give you a rundown. Um, obviously, Mandy Hart, I've been in parenting ministry for about 20 years. I've written four different books. Um, so I just want to show you that is legit, or that's the back of it. Parenting All Changes, Courage in the Fire, Parenting with Courage, and um, a Parenting Journal. So yeah, I've created and run parenting courses, and I empower parents to raise world changes. Uh, it's an intentional journey that I want to help parents go on, that they themselves have a personal transformation and they keep the connection with their kids. So that's my heart's desire, to see us all grow and learn together. The thing um, that I've noticed where we're at in the world at the moment is that we live in a VUCA world. So maybe if you are comfortable, give me a thumbs up if you know what a VUCA world is. If it isn't, that's okay. Um, but a VUCA world is a term that was first coined in 1987. It's a military term, but it describes a world that is in constant change and it's unpredictable. So think about the world we're living in right now. It's so unpredictable. We're living in an age of too much. Uh, I, every time I chat to parents this past week, they're too tired. There's just too much stuff going on. Um, in 1 Chronicles 12, verse 32, we see a passage where it says, the sons of Issachar analyzed their times, they perceived correctly what was going on in the world, and they knew what was happening and they knew how to respond. So as parents, I feel that we have to do the same. Just look at 2020. We started out this year. I mean, who could have seen <laughs> we would have been in lockdown? No one could have predicted that. No one could have predicted the way we educate our children has changed. The way they navigate things is just different. So we have to understand and discern the times that we're living in. So what is a VUCA world? Well, a VUCA world stands for four different things. Um, a VUCA world stands for a volatile world, an uncertain world, a complex world, and an ambiguous world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sending you a recording. So if you want to make notes, please feel free, but I'm just gonna talk and also feel free to put questions in the chat box that I'm happy to answer as we go along. And um, if you have any thoughts or ideas or whatever. A VUCA world involves a volatile world. So the speed of change and the turbulence we experience makes the world very volatile. The faster things change, the more volatile the world we're living in. Think about what we're reading in the news at the moment, um, all the different movements that are going on in the world. Think of families, how volatile is the family world at the moment? The makeup of family is different. The LGBTQ plus movement change, is changing the way people see family. We don't need really even men or have a husband to have a family anymore. You can have sperm donors. The, you know, all these things, you know, we're seeing in the news that men through different surgeries and things are having babies. So <laughs> it's volatile. <laughs> things, things are not kind of what they were 50, 60 years ago. And that, that affects the way we view family. In a VUCA world, things are uncertain. So how uncertainty is linked to how accurately we can predict the future. The more uncertain things are, the harder it is to predict the future. So related to marketplace, family life, parenting, educational factors. I mean, education is very uncertain at the moment. The peer pressure, the inequality, the gender-based violence, all these things that we're seeing in the world Things are uncertain. I don't know how you're feeling, but I feel, I can feel it. I can feel the world my children are walking into is a very uncertain world. It's not, not a world that I can predict <laughs> how their future is going to look. The stats are that they are, um, the careers that are going to be opening up in 10 years that our children are not even studying. So if you have children in high school or you're working with teenagers or varsity students, or even if you have young ones, they're going to be entering the marketplace in careers that don't exist today. How's that for uncertainty for our kids? 
think about complexity. So at the back of my book, Parenting World Changes, I have a ch a, like an appendix on the complexity theory. I find it really, really fascinating. And so the complexity theory is a number of factors that take into account and the relationships between them. So think about family. Now, this is a parenting class, so I'm going to be relating it all back to, to parenting, but we need new wineskins for the way we parent, the way we raise our kids, the way we work with children, the way we help students enter varsity, because things are so complex. The relationships are dynamic. We can't, if we had to take 2020 and we unpack it, we can't go back to how we were in January. The world looks totally, totally different. Do you agree with me? I mean, I'm seeing some yeses, yeah? Okay, so some of you are agreeing with me. Um, but the world looks very, very different. So the, a complex world means we can't put it back the way it was before. In complexity, we see that um, it's different from being complicated. So with, when something is complicated, you can put it together, take it apart, and you'll have all the same ingredients. When it's complex, so you can't go back. It's like baking a chocolate cake. I put all my ingredients in, I put in the oven, I have a chocolate cake. But I can't take the eggs out once I've broken them and the flour and the cocoa. It's, I've got a new thing, a new product. And so I really believe we're in a new world. Things are different. We can't go back to December 2019. And in a vocal world, things are ambiguous. So when something is ambiguous, it means there's a lack of clarity of how we interpret things. The information is incomplete. Nothing is clear anymore. If I think back, my daughter's in matric, and I think of how I'm helping her navigate this matric here, things are so ambiguous, it's not clear. You know, the matric finals were going to finish in November. Now they're finishing 23rd of December. Now I'm finding out they're finishing the 15th of December. Just <laughs> the information is incomplete and I'm having to help her be resilient as I, as a mom, am having to be resilient. So I know I'm painting quite a daunted, daunting picture, but when we want to raise secure, confident children in a VUCA world, we have to think differently. Each of you either are parents or work with learners or work with children or influencing families. We have to teach parents and families to think differently because the world looks different. So it's hard to parent well when the threats are real. Um, you know, for those of you who have daughters, um, or even for us as women, to want to walk outside and not feel insecure or threatened, that's, that's not the same. The threats are very real. The ch our children are facing threats in the social media scene and in the natural world. Um, so we have to parent differently. We need a new skill set. So how do we parent well in a VUCA world? So I'm going to share with you four ways, and then I'm going to just help you grow in some intentional skills. Um, so the first way that you can do is to adapt your parenting style. Now, as I'm making notes, if something stands out to you and you think, I need to learn more about this, or this is, this is what's sticking out for me, please make a note or comment on it or send me a question and I'm happy to send you more info. But one of the ways to adapt is to be intentional in your parenting. So I, at the moment I'm running a parenting course and we had a whole session on intentional parenting. I think that is so, so key, um, not only for us as parents in the way we parent our children, but also in the way we live. We have to live intentionally. We can't just let life happen. We have to think, how am I going to think differently? How am I going to help my children navigate a different world? And then we consider all the factors and we use wisdom and we put a plan in place. So maybe, I mean, if you feel comfortable, let me know what are some of the biggest challenges in your parenting right now? If you think of a VUCA world, how do you think you could help your children adapt? Please feel free to put it in the chat box and then um, if you're okay with it, I can comment, but also you could send me a private message and I'm totally fine with that. Um, so there, there are four ways. I'm just gonna carry on while, we, while some messages are coming in. But I'm just, um, so four ways. So I want to teach you how to breathe. We can just all take a deep breath. <laughs> in a vocal world where we feel like things are uncertain and things are, we're living in a world where things are too much, you can hold up your hand. If you want, you can practice with me. <laughs> you breathe in as you go out. 
as you go up your thumb. So in and then out, in, out, and you go all the way through your hand, in, out, in as you go up your fourth finger, <laughs> out through your mouth, in through your nose, and out through your mouth. Don't you feel calmer, hey? <laughs> Yeah, I can see some smiles. So, yeah, you know, we need to breathe, parents. So we need to we need to breathe. And incidentally, this is a great tool to teach your children. When they are feeling like things are too much and their emotions are getting too much, please teach them how to breathe. They say a lot of the stresses we face in life is not being able to breathe um, properly. We breathe so shallowly. So when we learn to breathe, it just slows us down. And in a VUCA world where things are volatile and uncertain and complex and ambiguous, we, we need to learn to breathe a bit so we can just slow things down. Um, secondly, get educated. Screen your news. So don't just read all the news things that are out there. There's a lot of fake news. In an ambiguous world, there's a lot of fake news. So screen the news that you are watching, but be educated. If you don't know what TikTok is, if you don't know what, you know, a lot of the social media things are out there that your children are involved in, find out. There's no excuse. We have to know the world that our kids are living in. Just like the sons of Issachar knew the times, we have to see what's happening out there. Then how do we help our children? And then celebrate moments of being connected with your kids. The goal is to have a relationship with your children all the way through the ages and stages. So I can recognize this is the world my children are growing up in, but I need to practice active listening. And fourthly, create an intentional parenting plan. I'm going to speak a bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, so I see we have 14 minutes left to go. So I'm really, this is a, a like a supercharged catalyst parenting <laughs> in a vocal world class. But um, I'm going to give you some steps on how to overcome a vocal world. And then this is for me one of the most important is in a VUCA world, a volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world, parents need extra grit and extra self-care because we can't give what we don't have. So we need to take care of ourselves in a way that is beneficial to our children and our families, in a way that we could contribute meaningfully in society, in the marketplace, in our homes. If we push ourselves so hard at the expense of everyone, you know, at the expense of ourselves, that we give everything to everyone else, we'll have nothing left to parent well. And I really believe that when you take care of yourself, you are actually taking care of your kids as well. So it's not saying Mandy is more important than my kids, but it's saying me too. I'm also important. You know, I need to care for myself too. So, you know, I'd love to give you four handles on how to overcome a vocal wall just to get you started. Um, obviously, this is not a full complete lesson on it, but just four handles relating to those four words to just spark some thinking in your mind as to how you can help your children or the, the families that you're working with. So in a volatile world where things are, remember, very, very volatile, counter it with family vision and family values. We live out of our value system, whether we like to admit it or not, where you spend your money, who you spend your time with. The things that you say are important to you is an indication to what your values are. So when things are very volatile and um, things are changing really fast, the values that you have in your home will help create some stability for your children. And children thrive on stability and consistency. Um, at the last parenting class we did, I said, what is your biggest challenge with um, you know, disciplining your children? Discipline is linked to correction and guidance and it was consistency. <laughs> I can see some people nodding saying, yeah, you know, cons being consistent, even just in my own life or taking care of myself, <laughs> being consistent is pretty hard. So in a volatile world, start with vision and value. Start parenting with the end in mind. So depending on the stage of life you're at with your kids uh, or who you're working with, think what kind of child do I want to raise? You're raising someone else's mother, someone else's father, someone else's husband, someone else's wife. So what's my end goal? And then start to work backwards and create that environment. Um, one mom told me the other day that she says, I don't think we have focused enough on values that we want our family to have. It's, so I need to make it more visible in my family life. I need to be more intentional. 
And she said to me that she knows she's made mistakes, but she wants to focus on building bridges with her children and using her values to, to help bridge those gaps and things. So, so values, I th definitely think, is a way to combat a volatile world. In an uncertain world, you grow your understanding. So I try to link V, volatile, with that vision of values. Uncertain world is with understanding. So develop your understanding. What are the digital boundaries? Know your children's world and love them deeply. So ask them questions about what's the world they're navigating in. Like question asking is one of the keys to wisdom. And if we, we want to gain wisdom, we need to learn to ask good questions. So how do we ask our children questions that could open up conversation, build relationships and help them feel safe? I would also ask your friends questions. How are they parenting? How are they creating a safe space at home with boundaries? You, what are the things that you're allowing in your family, not allowing in your family? Someone was telling me the other day that um, there was an advert and apparently um, this man came in through the front door with big guns and the mother just said, oh, go upstairs to my children's room, you know? And then girls came in very skimply dressed. They were like, oh yeah, there's my son's room, just go upstairs. And it was around gaming and saying, you wouldn't allow these people into your home, into your five, six, seven year old bedroom. So why do you not put boundaries around the, the gaming and the social media that they're allowed? And so when we understand the world our children are living in, it helps create uh, relationships and we can and parent with empathy and compassion. In a complex world, remember I spoke about a chocolate cake and you can't put, take out the ingredients. So we don't want to go back to 50 years back. South Africa was a terrible place. You know, we, we don't want to go back to the old ways. Um, but how can we develop clarity around raising our children so that they grow in confidence? So in complexity, things are all together. They, everything influences each other. There's a ripple effect. So what kind of clarity do you need? Do you need to understand the age your children are at and what's what developmental stage are they at and how do you have to adapt your parenting? So I can't parent my 18 year old daughter the same way I parented her when she was eight years old. She needs me to be more of a coach, not a teacher trainer. She needs me to support her and encourage her to pursue her dreams and remind her next year is going to be okay, Emily. You know, she's starting prelims now and I'm having to really provide clarity. My husband and I, as we helping her coach, give her clarity. What could 2021 look like when everything is uncertain? Um, do you have an action plan for your parenting or the way you, you work with children? Where are you taking them? What do you need to adapt? What do you need to embrace? What do you need to change? And in a VUCA world, things are ambiguous. So because everything is open to someone else's interpretation, we need to be adaptable. So that's the word. So in a VUCA world, we need to have vision and values. Uncertainty, we have to grow in understanding. In a complex aspect, we have to grow in clarity. So if I look at my children, am I being intentional about the things I want to put into their lives, the, the kind of child I want to raise, the, the things that make my heart come alive are different to theirs. So how do I understand their gift mix and how they're wired to let them fulfill the plans that God has for their lives. Not what Mandy has for them, but what they have for their lives. And because everything is open to an interpretation, I need to adapt. So I have to learn to adapt. Think about 2020. We've all had to adapt. We've had to help our children adapt. We've had to adapt in families, in the marketplace, in our work environments, in schooling, in education, we've had to adapt. In the economy, we have to rebuild the economy. We have to adapt. So when things are ambiguous and you know, everything's left open to interpretation, how could we interpret things for our family? And sometimes we need to realize that in parenting, different isn't bad, it's just different. So we need to teach our kids that, so that if someone's different from you, they're just different, it's not bad. And so how do I get clarity? How do I, how do I teach my kids to adapt in this world that they're moving into. I think the children coming out of school in the next two, three years are going to be probably the most flexible, adaptable, resilient, and different thinkers than we've seen before. There's a new breed of children being raised, and we have a chance to influence the next generation through the way we, we train ourselves as parents and help other parents to think differently. 
And then that transfers to the way we train our children and we teach them to think creatively, to think out the box, to think differently. How can they start businesses that will change the landscape of the world we're living in? So my heart is to equip parents to raise world changes. How can your children change the street, the community, the school, the, the town, the city, the country, the globe? <laughs> Amongst you listening to this message now, some of your children will impact countries. They will impact possibly continents. And we need to dream bigger with that. So, so let's just pause for a minute. We can breathe quietly and deeply. And... <laughs> Write down one thing that you think you can learn from today's lesson. What's your takeaway so far? And if you feel comfortable, please feel free to share something that stood out to you. I'd love to hear from you. You can unmute yourself and just share, but what's the one thing that stood out to you or something that you can apply straight away in your family? Um, Michael. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Go ahead. No, it's okay. <laughs> Go for it. You can go, it's fine. Okay, Annalie, go first and then... Okay, for me, it was um, knowing your children's world and to ask questions. I think that is important for me to be able to, to know as to where you as a parent and your relationship with your, with your child is so that you can know what is happening in the world and what is happening in his world so that you can actually adapt to what he is and how they're doing things in certain ways. Not like um, the values and all of that, but um, in certain ways you need to adapt. When it comes like, for example, a technology, how things has been done um, in, if you think back, way back in how we used to do things and how they are doing things now, definitely. I think um, for me, that stands out to be able to adapt to your children's world and to try to do things how they see it. That's good. Hi. Hey. To me, it would be taking care of yourself so that you can become a better parent. I'm always giving and giving. I just put myself at the back. So I think it's very important too. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> That's good. So how, how do you think going forward, you're going to prioritize taking some care for yourself? What's one thing do you think you could do? I think going forward, I'll start, like, I'll literally start by making myself a nice cup of coffee. Brilliant. <laughs> Before I can prepare breakfast for everyone else, I think I'll start with making myself something first. Then I'll be energized and then I'll be able to take care of them. Yeah, that's so and good. Allocating, that's so... allocating time for, for me to relax and reflect. That's very good. You know, Instead reflection of... is key to change. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And one that Naomi said, get informed. And I'm not sure, someone's cell phone number, I'm not sure who it is, but said family values. So I think when we come back to basics in a VUCA world, when we come back and we don't make things too complicated, so we just make it simple, we can really get back to the basics of parenting and raising children who are secure and confident. And I love your idea of a cup of coffee first. I remember when my children were younger, I used to feed them apples and bananas, or whatever, and then I'd think, oh, I haven't even had anything for myself. <laughs> I've been so busy giving to everyone else first. So I think it is important that make us some coffee first. So that's really, really brilliant. Um, I think, you know, we can all sit on lots of these webinars and we can, you know, carry on with the rest of the day. But if we don't take away something we can implement straight away in our family, it's not going to, to make a difference, you know, in our lives. So I love that, that we, there's a practical way. Um, for those of you who don't know, I do run a five-week parenting course. So if you're interested in being part of the next one, it starts on the 2nd of September. And I'd love you to join me. I know Annalene's on it and Naomi's on the current one at the moment. And I know that it is affecting their lives and changing their lives and, and um, you know, growing in confidence and in our own care of ourselves, as well as the way that we parent our children to raise more changes. But I'm going to send you all the recording and um, I'd love to get your feedback. So please just reply to the message. Say, man, I like this. I didn't like this. Or, 
Um, yeah, I'd love more resources on my website. I have loads of free resources. So go have a look. There's free eBooks you can download, lots of blogs, printables, um, all sorts of things. So I know that it is 12.29 and I just want to honor the time that we have together and thank you for joining me. And for those who are new to being part of Courageous Living and what I'm doing, I hope that you will get more info from us and your families will be strengthened and you will be encouraged. But have a great rest of a Monday, everybody, and look out for the email. I'm going to send you with a link. And let's hope that we can all raise children that will impact the world, that will change the world for good. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a great Monday. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>